Hi, and welcome to the five minute check in. Today is Thursday, April 6th. So, today we're going to talk about lung cancer screening and surgery for early stage lung cancer. And the reason we're talking about it is there was a recent publication in the New England Journal that looked at two approaches to early stage lung cancer for surgery. And I think this has a lot of implications, not just for the treatment of lung cancer, but also for how we think about lung cancer screening. And to help me in that conversation today, I have a very special guest. So our special guest today is Dr. Thomas Templin, a thoracic surgeon and the chief of surgery at St. Joseph's Medical Center, which is part of the Virginia Mason Franciscan Health System in the Pacific Northwest. Thomas, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, sir. Happy to be here. Great. So let's jump right into this. The whole reason we're here today is because of this major publication in the New England Journal, a very impressive clinical trial, looking at different approaches to early stage lung cancer treatment. Um, so can you give us a little context for this study and then go through the study and the results? It's a lot to do there and then quickly, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay. Absolutely. We'll get, we'll get through it here pretty quick. So this is a great trial, like you said. Um, it was done by Dr. Al Torkey and his colleagues out of New York. And the impetus for this trial was for many years, we've been doing large resections for early stage lung cancer. So taking out a whole lobe of the lung for maybe a one to two centimeter lung cancer, which was detrimental to the patient's overall breathing and their recovery after surgery. As we've evolved over the past 10, 15 years doing more minimally invasive procedures, we've also gotten better at doing smaller resections, preserving mm -hmm. patient's functional lung capacity. So Dr. Altorki and his colleagues looked at this and over 10 years between 2007 and 2017, they recruited 700 about patients into a phase three multi-center trial at 83 different institutions internationally. So big, big study, lots of great recruitment. And what they looked at was early stage lung cancers, two centimeters or smaller, and they had to be solid nodules with negative nodal disease. And so those are key distinctions. There's a few other trials out there that looked at some other things, but this is important because two centimeter nodules um, that are solid is, is big as far as survival goes. And they randomized these patients into two groups, sublobar resection or lobar resection, equal numbers in each, and then looked at the overall differences in survival. And what they found, there was really no difference in survival between lobar and sublobar resections for these early stage cancers. So amazing results, amazing trial. Let's think a little bit, what does this actually mean for you and your job and your practice? Uh, and then for common spirit and maybe for the entire country as we look at early stage lung cancer therapy. Yeah, absolutely. For our practice and, and what we've been doing here in the Pacific Northwest for many years is we've been doing robotic thoracic surgery, minimally invasive, smaller incisions going in and actually taking out these nodules in a sublobar fashion for a while now. My partner was one of the pioneers of that. And my uh, current partner is, we, he and I are continuing to do that. Uh, right. As far as across the country and across common spirit, you know, this is really the future of thoracic surgery. Get these nodules early, get them out in a minimally invasive fashion, losing less lung, providing the patient with a better recovery and maintaining their functional status. Yeah, I think that, you know, one of the things we always have to remind everybody that people that get lung cancer are people who have diffuse lung disease. So the more you take out of the lung, the less function they have postoperatively. So as we reduce that resection, quality of life is going to be so much better. So am I accurate in that in that yeah. comment? No, absolutely. The people don't really realize the Pacific Northwest, lots of industrial exposure, lots of history of heavy smoking. A lot of our patients have really poor lung function. They're already a little debilitated coming in. So if we can take out less lung and still treat their cancer and provide them that nice long-term disease-free survival, that's what we should do. And we should really be doing that across the country. There's plenty of places out there, you know, across the country. If you look at smoking trends where there's a lot of industrial exposure, a lot of people still smoking, we need to right. get to the patients and find them and treat them like this. Very quickly, this, of course, has a lot of implications and discussions around lung cancer screening. Because, uh, you know, are we, uh, what, are, what are the current um, standards for screening? Who are we screening these days? Great question. And glad you brought it up. Lung cancer screening is so important, especially as we're moving out of the COVID pandemic. We need to get people back into screening all cancers. 
Lung cancer screening, they just updated the guidelines with the United States Preventative Services Task Force. Uh, 50 to 80 year olds are eligible for screening who have either quit smoking in the last 15 years or are current smokers. And they have to have had a 20 pack year history of smoking in order to qualify. Right. So those are the, the, the real groups that we're trying to focus our attention on for the screening. And I think by having less invasive surgery, this might encourage people uh, to, to, to go for screening a little bit more because the surgery is, is much less invasive. Absolutely. It's, it's a lot different than the old days when we were making incisions this big in your chest. Right. You know, we can do it all through an incision. This, you know, a couple incisions like that. Pain and recovery so much fast. We get our patients out of the hospital in 24 to 48 hours. They do really well. Great. Well, we all need to get our patients in for screening. And I really want to thank you, Dr. Templin, for joining us. I want to thank you for everything you do for Common Spirit. Well, thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you at the next five-minute check-in.